Okay, this is episode four. Um, actually, the things that say episode three because I'm using the same um, thing, but it doesn't really matter. It's only just for testing purposes. So this is going to be a lot about maths because maths is an essential part of programming. To be fair, so I'm going to make a variable dim var one as integer. I guess is equal to three, and then. So what you can do is console dot write line. Um, so I'm going to show you some more math operators and the math class today. So I'm going to say var one, which is equal to three. Now, if you want to do to the power of something, use this symbol. Um, so that's how you say power. So you say the power of two. So this is going to return nine, like so. So if you say three. And that's going to turn 81. No, nope, that's, <laughs> that's the power of 4. My bad. Um, <laughs> um, so if you want to do uh, the square root of something, then you can say, we'll do 81 this time. And I'll do 9. Um, um, so if you want to say the square root of something, you can do 1 divided by 2. If you do maths, you'll know what, that that's how you do the square root of something. So that's, say, the square root. No, that's nice. The square root. Um, one thing you should know about uh, when doing maths and uh, VB is bracket systems work the same. So you put brackets here, then it will say it's the power of a half rather than the power of one, which is nine, and divide by two. So that's why I got four point five, and now you see three. So if you want to do, we'll do uh, the cube root. So if you change this to three, one over three is a cube root. So that's three. Uh, if you want to do a four root, then you change it to four, and there we are. Still so says three. Now, what you can do if you also know maths, if you want to, let's say four root something and then square it, you can do this. So this is going to say, I think, yeah. So that gets the four root of eighty-one and then it squares it. So that's how you do both on one line pretty quickly. Um, so that's pretty much all you need to know about that. There is something in the maths class, but it's not very good, and it's much better to use the power of rather than their stupid maths class version. Um, so now we're showing you the mod keyword. So I'm going to do var1 mod 3. So I'm going to set this equal to 6. Now this will return 0. What the mod keyword does, it says when this is divided by this, what is the remainder? So uh, 3 divided by 6 goes in 2 times, it has no remainders. So if I set it to 7, I will set it to 8. In fact, this should return 2 because the remainder of 2. Now you can do this yourself with a bit of maths, but it's nice to have the mod keyword there if you want to do that. Um, next I'll be showing you about bit shifting. So let's say 12. 12 is a nice number. So in binary, now I need to a little bit of mind me. You don't need to know this but it's quite nice to know bit shifting. Um, so 12 in binary is 1100 because that's the 8th column plus the 4th column which makes 12. Now you can say um, var1, I think I know how to do that, um, yeah, var1, shift to the left, two places. Now that's going to make 48, because it's going to be, um, let's do some little binary showing you here, it would be like this, and, and I forgot to say actually, um, in the previous videos, this is how you make comments with this comma thing. So this is your 32s, your 16s, your 8s, your 4s, your 2s, your 1s, like that. And then you can see it's 32 plus 16, which I think is 48. Yeah. So you must shift it that way by 2. Now you can shift it the other way. So if you do this, then you shift it that way, it should return 3. And so it would just be 0 here, 0 here one there, one there, and you see 2 plus 1 equals 3. So that's how you do bit shifting. Um, one thing you should know is you can't 
do decimal binary sort of thing. So it just gives you one. It ignores everything past the thing. In other programming languages, it does let you do this. Let's see if this works. No. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to be showing you about the math class. Now, the math class is quite cool. So if you want to access the math class, then you do math dot, and you can see all the things here. So there's quite a few useful. I'm not going to show everything. In fact, I don't know what everything does. Um, I know most of it. Um, so ABS, that means absolute. Um, so in maths, that's the same as having like these symbols around numbers. Um, so ABS, and then open bracket, close bracket. So this is where your thing goes here. So what this does, it just means if it's negative, make it positive. If it's positive, leave it positive. So I'm just going to output 4. But if it already was 4, then it's going to keep it 4. So it just makes it positive, basically. Okay, now we're showing you about rounding. So if you do math.round, and then put your number in here. So if you say 3.4, this will return 3. If you put 3.5, this will return 4, because it rounds up. If I put 4.5, this is going to round down, because it uses banker's rounding, or you call it unbiased rounding. There's quite a few names for it. Um, so if you want to turn that off, so it does it how you're probably taught. So if you do um, midpoint rounding dot round away from zero. So that's how you do the normal rounding. Um, to even, that is the way where it does it um, um, the way it does normally. So you don't actually need that. But that's what it is. Um, so this is an optional um, by vowel. So by default, it's from away um, to even, which is quite annoying because I think most people will prefer away from zero. Um, another thing is you can change the amount of decimal places. You can have both arguments. If you click on these arrows here, you can see if you do decimal places and then the mode afterwards like that. Um, so you can do that. So if you change this to four four, and then here and say digits. Uh, three decimal places, so not T. Ooh, yep. <laughs> um, so like that. Then it will do it to three decimal places. So that's all right, like that. So that's how you round three decimal places. Um, there's a floor function which um, returns the value rounded down. So three point zero 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 one would go to three. And then, like, 2.999 would go to 2, like that. Um, you can also do ceiling, which is the opposite, which means it always runs up um, ceiling, like that. So if this was 2.0001, then that would round up to 3, like so. But if it, if it got rid of that um, 1111, then it would go to 2. There's the power, which I'm not going to show you because you can use the sign, and there's also SQRT, which again I don't recommend using because that only lets you do to the, the square root, not the x root or whether whatever you want to call it. Um, so min and max, it tells you this finds the smaller of two values, and it, it can take more than two values. In fact, I think, and max tells you the larger of two values. You can use an if statement for that, but it's there if you want it. Okay, there are two constants in here, um, which is pi, which is 3.141592653589793131, which is, that's normally 2, I think. Um, and there's also e, this is only 1 because it's been rounded. e, which is also, I actually know e, <laughs> don't expect me to try and remember that. Um, you've also got your sin, cos, and tan in here. And bear in mind this is in radians, so if you want to do something, so let's say sin 90, um, that should return 1, but it's in radians. So you do sin 90 times by bracket, bracket, um, I think you need double bracket actually there, um, math.pi divided by 180, and then on the other side of the bracket, times by... 
90. Uh, actually, I don't need that. I think that will work. I've got too many brackets there. There we are. And that should work. Yeah, there we are. One. And then, so, sin, cos, and tan. Same one there. If you want the inverse sine, inverse cos, or inverse tan, you put an A in front of it. So, inverse of 1. So, I've got too many brackets still. <laughs> So inverse of 1, that should return 90, but it's in radians. So this time you don't do it inside the brackets, you just do it here. You say, I think it's divide by, no, maybe it's times by. I'll try times by, times by math dot pi over 180. No, it's divide. <laughs> So it's divided by math dot pi over 180. There we are, 90. So that's how you do the inverse sine, inverse cos, inverse tan is all the same. You just put an A in front of it. <laughs>